Welcome to Back to the Father, a show about the journey of life focused on our final end, which is God himself, our loving Father. And now here's your host, Dave Palmer. Well, good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Back to the Father here on the Guadalupe Radio Network social media sites of YouTube, Facebook, and X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Uh, We're glad you are with us today. We have a provocative and interesting topic today. And as you can see in the title of this program, are you studious or are you curious? Okay, this is a virtue and a vice that you may not have heard of. Of course, you're familiar with curiosity and studiousness, but did you know those were a vice and a virtue? And did you know, furthermore, what St. Thomas Aquinas says about them? And uh, I was on CDT this morning with uh, Adrian and Rudy and got a lot more reaction to that conversation than I typically get. So I think you're going to find this interesting and I want you to be easy on yourself because I think St. Thomas Aquinas' standard is really setting the bar high for the way we conduct ourselves as far as you know what we desire to know and uh, what we read and what we're interested in. And you can see on some levels it almost seems a little bit scrupulous, but uh, we will discuss all that. And I want to, with no further ado, welcome my two cohorts here in studio and across the glass. Uh, Cecil Anderson producing the program. Hello, hello. I'm back. (laughs) Yes, you are. Welcome back. How was your retreat? It was very good. I asked that like I had, like like it's the first time I've asked you. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) We haven't talked about it at all. (laughs) Yeah, no. no. It it was very, it was very nice uh, to get a little bit of respite uh, and just uh, rest a little bit. Uh, allergies got me while I was on the retreat. So I, w- I was joking with everyone. I was carrying my emotional support tissue box with me everywhere. Mm, yeah, um, they yeah. never had knew if I was emotional because of the retreat right. or if I was crying because of allergies. That's so, right. You so know. you had an automatic out. I so, oh, I'm not getting emotional. I'm not going to cry. I got allergies, That's guys. like when I went to the mass to drop off my daughter at Benedictin and I started, you know, tears were falling down my eye and I was like, it's just allergies. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sentimental <laughs> about dropping my daughter like off at college. Kansas allergies. Yeah, Kansas. <laughs> What's going on with all these allergies? You know, is there are talking about, you know, you know, leaving your daughter and your son at school. I mean, allergies were just really acting up. And so uh, also you might see on the screen, uh, James Jacoby is our new intern and he's interning this semester for college credit. And so he will be training with Cecil on how to run the, uh, the board. And in the future, he might be running the board and Cecil may be here in the studio with us. And then we also, of course, have our trusty homeschool, brilliant young man, William Kirkendall, with us as well. William, how are you? I'm pretty good. And William told me before the show started that uh, he is developing a love for philosophy, and it's been going on for a while now, huh? Yeah, about, about a year, if not maybe a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've said many times, if anybody threw me into a position that you're in right now when I was your age... I don't know what I would have done. I would have just <laughs> stared at the wall and hoped that nobody ever came to me and asked me any questions, all right? I, I, I would not have been able to carry myself in a quarter of the way you do. So uh, that's pretty, pretty awesome. All right, so let's get uh, right to it. And I, last week, so, so I know you were out, uh, Adrian was at the helm and, uh, and, and we got into a pretty deep conversation. It wasn't very structured. See, that's why when I'm here, we don't allow that. Yeah, you yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> you simplify things a little I bit, si- right? I am a simple person. Hey, we that's simplify God's things. first attribute, See? okay? So you're godly. God Thank is simple, you. right? Thank you. Not simple-minded, just simple, right? That That's a good thing. And so this one's going to be a little more structured, and uh, I've got some trivia at the end of the program, which is going to be rapid fire, and it's not difficult. Remember a couple weeks ago when I had that really hard one, and you guys were just like, yeah, that was like two or three weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was not good. (laughs) That that, that, like ruined everybody's weekend. Uh, Uh, So anyways, uh, and if you uh, are out there and you want to comment and let us know where you are, I see uh, Nancy, I think, is out there, um, so thank you for watching, Nancy. Nancy, and anybody that joins us, you can comment, and Cecil will keep track of those uh, comments. So, all right, so I've got a, a graphic here that we can put up on the screen of uh, four people, and you got to ask yourself are, are these people exercising the virtue of studiousness or the vice of curiosity? And what is the difference? Okay, so uh, I think we've all at times perhaps uh, been studious, 
And uh, so well, what comes to your mind when you think of studiousness? I mean, not uh, me. No, <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, I always picture, you know, honestly, what comes to my mind about studious is I always picture my sister because she was a very good student, like a very, very good student. Um, uh, but uh, so I always picture her just kind of, especially in her high school days. She just I was always she's always got her nose in a book. She was always studying very thoroughly. So I just picture her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't think anybody would ever consider studiousness to be like an insult if somebody no. said, oh, William is studious. Now, curiosity, on the other hand, I think could go either way. It you could, know, yeah. If somebody mm-hmm. said, you know, William is just a curious guy, you know, he might think, mm, I don't know if they're complimenting me or insulting <laughs> right. me, right? Or right. like, you know, Curious George, who was just, you know, that that old, right. that, that, that actually wasn't a person, a little, <laughs> little fake uh, monkey. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I think most people would think that curiosity is a virtue, you know? Uh, my, my child mm-hmm. is really curious about life life and likes to explore things. And so in what way is curiosity actually a sin? Okay. And that's what Thomas Aquinas is going to get at. I think you're going to find this kind of interesting. And so let's go to the first slide here. And uh, Thomas says, whether the proper matter of studiousness is knowledge. Okay. He says, properly speaking, study denotes keen application of the mind to something. Okay. For the knowledge of truth, strictly speaking, is good, but it may be evil accidentally. Okay, so how is our pursuit of knowledge could be evil? All right, that's I'm going to give you eight ways that Aquinas says that our pursuit of knowledge could turn sinful. And I'll ask you guys to try to guess some of these before we get to them, okay? Uh, the philosopher Aristotle says all men have a natural desire for knowledge. Now think about this. Aren't human beings the only creatures that seek knowledge? Okay, I and I, 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 seek, I, I no 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 I can flat out say no because Curious George. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you were listening to the first part of the show, weren't you? Uh, yeah, was. Curious George. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, and that's an interesting thing because sometimes when people make these shows, they will like to give human characteristics to animals, animals yeah. right? Okay, so. But are you talking about like our? Like as far as like animals, are there animals that seek well, knowledge? Even, even angels, I mean, oh, because angels. angels are created with infused knowledge, right? Right. Uh, now, now on the other hand, like an angel won't know what William is going to have for dinner tonight, right? They'd have to find out as you know, because they don't know the future, right? So, but are angels like you know? Oh, I wonder what he's going to have for dinner tonight. Or they, I don't think they really care. I mean, they're not. Yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't think so. But as far as like facts about things and the knowledge that we have to gain little by little throughout our life, the angels have it infused into them at the moment they're created, right? So mm-hmm. I think it would be accurate to say that we're the only creatures that seek knowledge. I would agree because, yeah, like a dog is not going to is not gonna look for, uh, look for knowing something. He doesn't want to know where the tree comes from. He just yeah. wants the tree. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. exactly. I had, yeah. uh, you know, I do this away mm-hmm. a day for my students. And one of my Highland students that I'm teaching this year, she she took a picture of her dog uh, sitting on the the back porch, kind of looking out into the well, you know, the like trees and the sunset. And she brought up a very interesting question. She said, "I was just wondering if the dog is wondering about you know life." Mm. And I I said. Thomas would say no, because wondering means you're trying to figure out the cause of it, you know, and I, I just, you know, we don't know the minds of dogs, right. but I don't think there's any indication right. that dogs are going that deep, right? right. Yeah. I mean, it, it might look like they are just because they're, they're looking into the distance, but yeah, mm-hmm. they're prob- their brains aren't probably yeah. right. processing right. anything. Because yeah. if they're doing no. that, they'd probably be writing poetry, <laughs> right. pictures. Oh, and, man, right. that'd be amazing. You know, that would be uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> A dog, Although, dog have, poetry, right? And I don't know if, it, I've never, like, done deep research on this, but if you see, like, the videos of, like, elephants painting, painting flowers yeah. and stuff like that, so I'm like, is that just pure training? Yeah, you I know? don't know. You're I, like, I, what? I, what is that coming from? I think that's all kind of kind of weird, or yeah. maybe it's... I don't know. To me, it's kind of like a, a Eucharistic miracle where it doesn't happen normally. Oh, normally. But so maybe, it's more maybe of a miraculous thing. Maybe God just throws thing. us mm. a, a little curveball curve every ball, now yeah. and then, and I'm going to have this animal do something really crazy. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, I've seen those, yeah. and I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how legitimate those are or what. Yeah. But okay, so uh, so we know that knowledge is not bad. Uh, human beings are the only ones to seek knowledge. The next slide says. Okay. Oh, let me. Okay. So, what? What? Studiousness is a virtue, right? Okay. What cardinal virtue do you think studiousness falls under? There's only four. You know, prudence, justice, temperance, fortitude. So, which of the four cardinal virtues do you think it falls under? Mm, maybe fortitude, or what was the other one I was thinking? It might be. Yeah. 
But did you have another one? I was, I was going to agree with. Oh, okay. Fortitude, <laughs> fortitude. Yeah. yeah. I was, fortitude, because okay. I'm thinking you're like building up your knowledge in your brain. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's actually not right, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. It's well, actually temperance. Okay. That was okay. going to be my yeah, second guess. Because you think about it, there's, there's, there's like a spectrum of like, I can know this much or like seek this much knowledge or I could seek too little. And so mm. the, the, and so there's actually a sub virtue under temperance before you get to studiousness and that's modesty. Mm. Okay. So you can be modest in the way you dress, the way you speak, the way you laugh, how much you laugh. So modesty uh, is, is the, the virtue right above studiousness. And then above that is, is temperance. Mm. Okay. So it falls under temperance. Here's, here's the explanation. He says it belongs to temperance, to moderate the movement of the appetite, lest it tend excessively to that which is desired naturally. Now, just as in respect of his corporeal nature, man naturally desires the pleasures of food and sex, so in respect of his soul, he naturally desires to know something. Thus, the moderation of this desire pertains to the virtue of studiousness. Wherefore, it follows that studiousness is a potential part of temperance as a subordinate virtue annexed to the principal virtue. Moreover, it is comprised under modesty for the reason given above. I, I love that. You know, you have the, the four cardinal virtues. And if you read the, the second part of the second part of the Summa, you'll see all of the other virtues and vices that fall under those four main ones. And so every, every moral virtue falls under one of those four. Okay, so prudence is an intellectual virtue. But all right, so does that make sense? So now we go next slide. Eight ways... Seeking knowledge can lead to sin. Dun, 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 okay, dun. so here we go. <laughs> and uh, some of these are really interesting. I'd love to get your, your thoughts on them. And th those of you out there in social media land, let me know if you think Aquinas is just going uh, way <laughs> overboard, way too much. But I will say that there is a quote that is attributed to somebody talking about Thomas Aquinas and they said when he wasn't speaking to God, he was speaking of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so think about that. That's a high standard. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you can't speak 100% of the time only about God. You know, like, you know, hey, honey, what's for dinner? You, you know, you, oh, you know, mash me over, what, uh, you know, that's not about God, you know, because you said pot pie, you know. Mm -hmm. So how, how can one do that, you know, either speak to God or about God? Mm -hmm. You know, okay, so that's kind of the standard. So any guesses about when uh, knowledge and James, feel free to jump in as well. You can you can give your answer to Cecil when knowledge could be potentially sinful, not not knowledge, the pursuit of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, any guesses? Um, so I was thinking earlier that when I heard the subject, I was thinking there can be times I think when like, for instance, okay. Eve, she ate of the fruit of all knowledge um, of good and evil, right? Yeah. And so that pursuit, that desire to be like God, mm. I, again, I don't, th I think this would be a, a rare person who is like, I want to learn so much so that I'm more powerful than God. Cause I think we, most of us recognize that that's not possible, mm -hmm. but, and then, or like the, um, yeah, things like that. There's times when, like, I, I don't know. I don't yeah, even know if that well, counts okay. as one. This is gonna, this is gonna be under no, number six. Oh, okay. okay. So at least I'm get, under uh, something. Uh, Yay. <laughs> no, no. There's, there's eight of them, and you just nailed number six. Oh, perfect. Okay. So, uh, any I was other gonna, guesses? I was gonna say something along the same lines because I know at the beginning you talked about curiosity and how curiosity can be a bad thing. It's like when, when, um. When people get immersed in like the new age stuff and the, mm. the necromancy and all oh, that, oh yeah, yeah, all that yeah. Dark is that stuff. another one? Okay, yes, it yeah. is. That's number four. Well, then I guess oh, knowledge. Wow. Uh, now, to get... these aren't ranked. It's not like four is better well, than six. Well, there's okay? like you want to no, if you want to know. Although William is better than you. Okay, okay. you know what? <laughs> That's just because he doesn't win <laughs> trivia. Um, just because uh, I think gossip. If you want to know gossip. Like you desire mm -hmm. to know more about someone than you really should know. Mm -hmm. That's not really pertinent to your relationship or because right. 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 someone says, oh, did you hear blah, blah, blah. And you should be like, no. Okay. Stand right. back. So that I think <laughs> kind of falls under number three. Okay. And, you know, I, I used this example on Kathy Drive Time this morning and I, and I, Adrian, the host is, you know, 25. And I said uh, a few years before Adrian was born and Cecil was born, there was this big trial of O.J. Simpson. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're familiar with I've that. I've heard about it. It happened yes. long before you ever lived. Right. So O.J. Simpson was accused of killing his wife and, um, and, and another gentleman who allegedly was having an affair with her, right? 
And the whole country, I say that with air quotes, some people, of course, didn't, but everybody was just totally wrapped up in mm -hmm. this trial. And for months and months and months, everybody was talking about O.J. Simpson trial and the murder trial, and he was guilty or he was innocent. And then finally in 1995, the verdict came out, and they, they found him not guilty, right? And you know, some people were mad, some people weren't. Uh, but it was it was gruesome. I mean, because he, he you know, stabbed his victims, and there was blood and the pictures and, you know— uh, and that's the, that's an example of curiosity, you mm -hmm. know. And believe me, I fell for it. I mean, I was oh I yeah, was, well, I was gripped by a more it, okay? recent one is like the uh, uh, Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. Yeah, exactly, Everyone was very exactly. like, have to know what's happening, what's yeah, going on. Yeah. and it, it's kind of like one of those good things. Good looking people. It's you know has to do with yeah. You know, I mean, I think sometimes it's an escapism because we're all like, oh, I don't want to have to deal with the actual problems in my own life. I, I <laughs> let me let me look at someone else's. How about, how about Kyle Rittenhouse? <laughs> Do you remember that trial yes, uh, yeah. a couple mm -hmm. years ago? How about Brett, so, Brett Kavanaugh? There's mm -hmm. so many. Yeah, and there, there's these ones that, I mean, because really the the, the, the O.J. Simpson trial, the, uh, the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp trial has nothing to do with my life, okay? So right. I think what Thomas is going to say is that's time you could have been praying. That's mm -hmm. time you could have been in adoration. That's time you could have been with your, your kids. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, anyways, I, I think we're all, most of us are, to some degree or another, guilty of a little bit of curiosity. So, you guys got a few of them. Do you want to guess any more? Or uh, <sighs> some of them are are, are are really interesting. And are they a little uh, obscure, or like it's not something we think of? Or do you think they're all that we could he, come to? There, there's a there's a quote from Augustine that Thomas quotes in the Summa that I really want your thoughts on because I think in this particular one, Aquinas is going. Uh, and, and Augustine are going too far, but um, and then there's another one that's number. Da, 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 let's see, uh, number five I think is very interesting as well and very pertinent to a lot a lot of people. Uh, okay, so you want to get uh, right into I it? I think we can jump in. Okay, yeah. so this one. Uh, um, okay, is number one is when one tends by his study to the knowledge of truth as having evil accidentally annexed to it. For instance, those who study to know the truth that they may take pride in their knowledge. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I want to get a PhD so I can tell everyone I have a PhD. Yeah, and I, yeah. I think this is very common. And yeah. I, I, I got to say, you know, guilty as charged. Like, man, I, I read the Summa all the way through. And, you know, and oh, yeah, you I've said be before, like, I, I think even though I don't think I'm as intelligent as, like, PhDs, I think I can have a conversation with them. And mm -hmm. I've said that many times. It's like, it's it's pride, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so, like, why, why am I getting knowledge? Right. You know? I love this quote from Augustine. He said, this is a pretty funny, you know? Some there are who forsake virtue and ignorant of what God is, and of the majesty of that nature, which ever remains the same, imagine they are doing something great. If with surpassing curiosity and keenness they explore the whole mass of this body, which we call the world, so great a pride is thus begotten that one would think they dwelt in the very heavens about which they argue. <laughs> Isn't that great? So sassy. And this, and this yeah. is coming from one of the most intelligent people that ever right. lived. I mean, right. Augustine clearly was bright he's self-aware though <laughs> yeah yeah he if there's a self-aware person in the world but uh and if anybody has any comments out there let me know otherwise i'll just keep on uh moving uh with these and uh okay on to number two which i don't think uh da, 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 da. this one uh, i was kind of surprised y'all didn't get this one uh oh uh, <laughs> that's always it's always great to hear <laughs> shame yeah, shame on you uh in like manner those who study to learn something in order to sin are engaged in a sinful study, according to the saying of... So uh, learning how to break into, like, uh, I don't know. What am I trying to say? Or, or I mean, I, I, yeah, like, I, I was thinking, and maybe this isn't okay. what... Uh, or like just, like, looking into, you know, like, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> stories of... of, of Ways you can sin or... Right. I like a, a really, like, horrible classic example. I remember there was this man, and this is this is just, like, crazy weird but a man who like electrocuted his wife and he had done a search for like they they found he did a search like how does one electrocute sure. their wife i mean it's like oh, wow. that obviously <laughs> is seeking knowledge well, right. for something that's sinful there's right? all like right. the criminals that will copy each other by researching what the mm -hmm. other person did but you could also do things like how to break how into to a, a house bomb, how to build yeah. a bomb how to do all these things that are or even gosh how to like you know i don't know if people who world leaders who are really terrible ever researched how to <laughs> How to take over the world to be terrible. I, mean, I think Napoleon <laughs> did that search on Google. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Learning to pick locks. That's what Adrian's saying. See, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking like Googling, how does one like, you know, um, hotwire a car? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you that's, uh, you know, uh, well, 
Well, they, I mean, there, there was a, a, okay. a, a young lady recently, I think I, I, I may have talked to you about this, Cecil, who, uh, a you know, teenage girl, got into her car, oh, yes. got, got it up to 100 miles per hour, drove into a wall, oh, and, wow. and, and killed her boyfriend and his friend. But yeah, I think one of the things that convicted her is that she, I think she had done some research about how to do this. You oh, know, wow. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so anyways, See, I mean, these are all extreme examples. I'm kind of one of those silly people who just kind of is curious how you hotwire a car. Cause I always think of what if I being pursued and I have to jump in a car, <laughs> I think very action movie. Like, yeah. so I'm, someone's going to one day be like, says, well, you have a lot of convicting things in your Google search. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting you say that because I think that, uh, there are some, some of these are circumstantial. Like for example, um, if, if somebody, you know, like like, uh, like the the O.J. Simpson trial that I used the example of, the the attorneys representing O.J. Simpson and the prosecuting attorneys have to see, learn all this stuff, right? right? They have to see the pictures, they have to do the, the digging, they have Into to the evidence. They have that. to. They, yeah. So so for them, it wouldn't be curiosity. Okay, this is their job, right? You know, th- this morning right. on on Catholic Drive Time, Adrian was talking about this um, this group called Ghost. Um, and they're like a like a demonic group, and oh, fun. they're having some event in the woodlands this weekend. And Adrian was talking about people going out and praying the rosary, and he was going to go out there and all that. Mm-hmm. And I think Adrian said that he had gone on a Wikipedia page and done a little bit of research on this band, you know, a demonic band. So him doing it as a host of a radio program, right, would not be curiosity. Okay, now he didn't say right. go everybody and, and you research them. But if somebody listening to that show were to say, "I'm going to go check out some YouTube videos of Ghost," you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you know, it, it, that could be curiosity. Yeah. You know, so I think it's very, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's it's person to person. I, I I think about the 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 people in like CPS who have to. Re- you know, do, do this the research, or or like the, the the that movie Sound of Freedom, where they would have had to have had to do some research oh, on yes. human trafficking, and mm-hmm. I, I I don't envy them having to do that, but that would not have been curiosity because that's right. all for making a movie, right. you know, assuming the the movie you know was for a good purpose, right? Right. right. All right, so I beat that one to death. Um, any other comments? Now, number three is uh, one of y'all got number three. What which one? Uh, I think uh, was it about it was relating to curiosity. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I, yeah. yeah. The um, so this one is interesting, especially the the example he uses. Um, he says, "When a man is withdrawn by a less profitable study from a study that is an obligation incumbent on him," and then he quotes Jerome saying, "We see priests forsaking the gospels and the prophets, reading stage plays." And singing the love songs of pastoral idols. Oh, okay. I definitely okay. am guilty of this one frequently. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I could be reading this one book, or I'm like, oh, but on second thought, I want to research this really random thing. I don't need to be, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or not or, bad. Or, or it, it could just... be like when you're when we're at work. Oh okay? yeah, yeah. And yeah, then let's say trying. our job is to do X, Y, and Z, and we're off on YouTube, or yeah. we're off, you know, that that would be. Dave and I are extremely ADHD. I will just get a thought in my mind and be like, I. Want what that type of bird is and like i'll just be like google (laughs) yeah i know i know so that's i mean again a a lot of these things it's it's a spectrum like is that is that curiosity Uh is that a sin is that Mm -hmm. i I wonder if any priest i'd love to ask a priest has anybody ever come into the confessional and said i want to i want to confess the sin of curiosity you know because nobody talks about this right you know we do of course but then here this example of a priest okay he it says forsaking the gospels and the prophets reading stage plays it doesn't mean that a priest can't read a stage play. It doesn't mean a priest can't read love songs of pastoral idols, whatever that means. Uh, it, I think what it means is that he's neglecting his primary duty in doing this. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, it it kind of sounds, this, th- this, you know, number three here, it sounds a lot like uh, simply getting distracted. And I, it's a common thing, which is why I think I think you're right. We all We all deal with this at some point or another because we're all distracted by something mm-hmm. and i think of this if it's a sin or not it kind of depends on when you're being distracted and if you're That's allowing true. it like it's true if you're in a free time when you are you know have done what your duties are for that moment and you know you're just maybe sitting at your house relaxing mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it could or, probably be more fruitful to do other things but yeah, and if we're at work and uh, we yeah. take to take a lunch break and we want to yeah, do a research yeah. about you know flowers or mm-hmm. you know, whatever <laughs> yeah those those, those searches uh, about flowers so anyways mm-hmm. that one is uh 
Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, uh, and again, I, I think most of us can relate to these. All right, mm -hmm. so number four is the one that William got. You talked about uh, like soothsayers and augurs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I saw something, a sign, and you've probably seen these signs where it's like, I saw a sign the other day and it said, psychic, $10. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, and, you know, it's tempting because I think a lot of people, they just want to know that somebody may have some secret knowledge mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know, and I, then they'll I, know what direction they need to go in life. Right, exactly. So they're they're going to somebody because they have some kind of knowledge, or they they think they do, right? Right. Uh, ten bucks is pretty yeah, cheap. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> ten dollars. Uh, that's... That's... Discount psychic, right? <laughs> yeah. But look how look how Aquinas words this because he doesn't talk about soothsayers or uh, psychics. Look who he uh, um, he says when a man studies to learn of one by whom it is unlawful to be taught. As in the case of those who seek to know the future through the demons. Oof. Okay, mm -hmm. the demons. This is superstitious curiosity of which Augustine says, maybe the philosophers were debarred from the faith by their sinful curiosity and seeking knowledge from the demons. And so I think he would kind of lump all these together that the, the psychics and the soothsayers and the tarot card readers, I mean, that, that does have a, you know, a demonic origin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so yeah, I've never, I've never really been that drawn to anything like that, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, tarot cards and you know, all that, but I, I think it, it's a classic example of curiosity. Yeah. yeah. People want to know People, yeah. what, what is my future? What am I supposed to do? Yeah. And instead of doing the hard work and the prayer and, you know, intercession of the saints, they go to somebody else. Right. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that, that's that one. And uh, da, 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 let's see. Okay, this one I, I find. Um, um, da, 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 da. Okay, this one I, I find really interesting. We're number five now. Uh, yeah, number okay. five. Okay, when a man desires to know the truth about creatures without referring his knowledge to its due end, namely the knowledge of God. Hence, Augustine says that in studying creatures, we must not be moved by empty and perishable curiosity, but we should ever mount towards immortal and abiding things. By so creatures. If, so if you're a if you're a biology teacher at a public high school, yeah, I'm just I'm just using an example here, and you're teaching the kids about biology and science, and first of all, you're you're probably not allowed to connect it to God in a public school. But I think what he's saying here is if you're teaching about the natural world and you're not connecting oh, it to God. Okay. I, I remember one time I, I really kind of upset Paula because I, it was a long time ago, I went into a natural, a museum of natural science and it was in Fort Worth, kind of like a pearl museum, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And going around and looking at all these exhibits and dinosaur bones and this and that and all that kind of stuff. And it just all of a sudden hit me. It's like nothing about this is connecting any of this to, to God. To God. Yeah. Right. And so it's all these facts about dinosaurs and planets and, you know, like, you know, whatever, the rotation of Venus and, you know, but I think what he's saying, and I think this is a high bar that very, very few people other than, you know, like theology teachers are, are doing. And I think that some of the, the Catholic schools are trying to do this now where, you know, like each discipline is incorporating God, you know, right. But I don't know. I, I find it interesting. You know, if, if you're, if you're teaching science at a Catholic school and you're not in, talking about God mm -hmm. in your, in your science class, there's a problem. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't ever remember, you know, in each of my classes, you you went to theology class to learn about God, right? You know? right. but the other classes it doesn't connect well, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I Interesting. I, I think this is one that, uh, you know, should be every, every principal of every Catholic school should read this and yeah. say, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of them are doing that these days. Oh yeah. You know, just to don't, don't, you know, don't make theology just one class. Theology should really encompass every class. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. Any, any comments on that one or anybody out there? Um, Mm. No, no one's added a comment uh, on social media. Although I do feel like when I was younger, um, after we became Christian, I remember we did all, I would go around and anytime there wasn't something God connected to something when I knew it should be, have a lot of fun being very obnoxious about it. Like <laughs> I had a, um, 
teddy bear that I got from uh, build a bear and it had a little voice box in it that sang a happy birthday song. I got it for my birthday and the song went, you know, happy birthday. We're celebrating the day that the world gave us you. And I would say so loudly and obnoxiously the world God gave. <laughs> so like, I was like, you can't take God out of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine, you know, uh, I don't know if either of y'all been to like Niagara Falls or the Grand Canyon. When I was like three, yeah, I Niagara have Falls. not. So I've been to the Grand Canyon though. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I probably told you my story about Niagara Falls. I had a really quick visit because I was in Buffalo doing a, a pledge drive, mm -hmm. and I was on the air, and then I had like a you know three or four hour break, and then I was back on the air in Niagara Falls. I think it was like an hour away or something from okay. from Buffalo. So I drove up there. And it was like a 20-minute parking lot where before you had to pay. And I jumped out of my car, and I went over to Niagara Falls. It's amazing. I mean, do you remember it? Not really, no. no. Yeah. I remember being really scared of the, of the whole thing. <laughs> it's loud. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's loud. It's so and, powerful. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so I was just like, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I think it was like like one of the, the vacation movies where they went to the Grand Canyon, and they're like, okay, let's leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and so that's kind of how it worked. Right. But, but, it, but uh, my point is, is that, you know, it, 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 how many people actually see something like that and say, praise God, you know, mm. uh, I've kind of trained myself to do that. Or when you go to a zoo and all these amazing creatures, I've always thought you ought to have signs at the zoo saying, don't forget to connect all these creatures to their creator, yeah. to their creator. Yeah. Uh, something appropriate. I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they don't they don't just, you know, fall out of trees. I right. mean, these <laughs> right. things were created. Right. Uh, and uh, but again, I think a lot, for a large part, that's been lost. Mm, yeah. Um, in, in our in our culture today. So, OK, so that is number five. And we have uh, three to go. And the next one, uh, Sissel got, but I don't remember exactly what you Was oh, this thought about knowing too much to be like God? Yeah. Is that that one? Yeah. yeah. So when a man studies to know the truth above the capacity of his own intelligence, since by so doing, men easily fall into error, wherefore it is written, seek not the things that are too high for thee, and search not into things above thy ability, and in many of his works be not curious. So I think mm. that would probably qualify for trying, trying not to be God. Yeah, right? yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's uh, it's also um, could be like you're just trying to learn things really deep, deep stuff. And I've I've often thought myself is like, well, why why are, why are you so like interested in philosophy? And uh, you know, like uh, you know, th maybe there there are some people that it just isn't their thing. I mean, they, they, mm -hmm. they're, they're not they maybe cut out for it or to learn engineering or, yeah, you know, I don't know, just trying to learn something that is not, you're not suited for, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. That, that That's one of the things that popped into my mind. So, uh, okay, so that, uh, I want to get to this Augustine quote. I hope I have it in here somewhere. Um, I think I do. Okay, so the next one, okay, it says, uh, now he's talking about, the vice of curiosity about sensitive knowledge. He makes a difference between intellective knowledge and sensitive knowledge. And he says, the knowledge of sensible things is directed to two things. For the first place, both in man and in other animals, it is directed to the upkeep of the body because by knowledge of this kind, man and other animals avoid what is harmful to them and seek those things that are necessary for the body's sustenance. So I take that to mean that if you look into the things that you need to sustain your body, you know, people do research on, you know, vitamins or mm -hmm. food or nutrition or health or, you know, that kind of thing, then that's that's not a bad thing, right? Um, okay, so then, uh, da, 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 da. okay, now let, let go, go to this next one, okay? He says, in the second place, it's directed in a manner special to man, the intellective knowledge. Okay, now, this is the quote from uh, Augustine that I want you all to, to see, number seven. It says, when the sensitive knowledge is not directed to something useful, but turns man away from some useful consideration. Augustine said in his confessions, I go no more to see a dog coursing a hare in the circus, but in the open country, if I happen to be passing, that coursing haply will distract me from some weighty thought and draw me after it. And unless thou, having made me see my weakness, did speedily admonish me, I become foolishly dull. Okay, did you get that? 
No. So the la- <laughs> <laughs> I read. Someone's the, gotta I say started it. reading the confessions like three years ago. I didn't understand any of it. I'll have to read <laughs> oh, it again really? now okay. that I'm older. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, a dog coursing a hare in the circus. Okay. I I had to look up what it means to course a hare. A hare is a is a rabbit. Okay, right. You know right. that. So you got mm-hmm. a dog chasing a rabbit. And they're doing so by sight and smell. And I guess back then in the 5th century when Augustine lived, that's what they did at circuses. And they had dogs chasing, you know, rabbits around. And people were hooting and hollering and thought that was really cool and fun and all that. Yeah. So I think what he's saying is that, you know, he, he, he stopped going to circuses because for some reason he just thought that was kind of silly, you know, to, to be somewhere watching a dog chase a <laughs> rabbit around, right? Yeah. But then he goes on to say, but if I'm out in the open country and I see a dog chasing a hare and I'm contemplating something else. I don't want to be distracted by it. And then he goes so far as to say that God will admonish him and he becomes foolishly dull. And that's what I'm thinking like, really? I mean, so you're contemplating something kind of deep and you see on the corner of your eye, a dog chasing a rabbit and you like look over at it and it's like, oh, that's interesting. I mean, it seems like Augustine saying, oh, my goodness, I shouldn't have done that. I had to focus on, you know, my deep the- you know, philosophical thought. Hmm. And I'm like, really? I mean, there's, the, the, that, that's there for a purpose. Or you see a bird and you see a, yeah. you know, why can you not just notice something? You yeah, know? I don't know. Yeah. I, that, to me, that seems a bit scrupulous, hmm. you know? Yeah, I no, know. I could see that. I think yeah. so, yeah. But then again, if you're St. Augustine and uh, for the next, you know, uh, 2,000 years of Christianity, the whole world is going to be relying on your brilliance, uh, <laughs> maybe that dog and hair sh- should not distract you. you right, know? And, right. Like if you're writing a book, you know, not that that would ever happen, but I mean, you know, and, and, you're, and you're being distracted by the birds and, you know, things going around you, maybe that's not the time you need to be distracted, right? True. This feels slightly personal, but like... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, no, 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 no. There, when you have a particular job, that, especially if it's a calling from God to be focused on, um, like if you're in seminary, if you're raising your kids, don't be distracted by other things that aren't as important. Right. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's do the last one here. And uh, then see if anybody has any further comments. And this one, um, this is this is kind of what we've already covered, but he's doing this with sensitive knowledge. When the knowledge of sensible things is directed to something harmful, as looking on a woman is directed to lust, even so the busy inquiry into other people's actions is directed to detraction. Then he says, on the other hand, if one be ordinately intent on the knowledge of sensible things by reason of the necessity of sustaining nature or for the sake of the study of intelligible truth, this studious, studiousness about the knowledge of sensible things is virtuous. Okay, so he's saying sometimes we do need to do research on certain things because it's for the upkeep of, of the body. But, you know, Adrian and I were talking about that, and Adrian and I don't agree entirely on this, but just there, there's this famous, I guess, scenario. I, I guess it actually did happen where an attractive woman is walking at the Vatican and there's two, two bishops and one of them looked away and one of them looked at her with love because one of them knew that he didn't have the self-control to not let his mind go bad places. And the other one did have self-control. And I don't know if Adrian is still watching or not, but I think Adrian was more of the opinion that, you know, you, I, I think it was more of like maybe a, maybe a provocatively dressed woman, uh, that you know everybody should turn away, every guy should turn away because it's always going to be a temptation to sin. Whereas I think this story was saying that that one bishop felt like he had custody of his eyes and he could look at her with love and not be drawn into sin. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like conditional. I think Adrian was saying, nah, I, I think God can use that one per- that one bishop to maybe, because maybe that woman hadn't been looked properly. Uh, looked at properly, not in a you know a sensual way, yeah, in a yeah. long time. And so if both of them look away. Then, then she's like, but then then yeah. you're like, but then she's seeing two Catholic bishops who won't look at her. Yeah. And yeah. again, right. I I get the uh, temptation that you have to know. Just like everyone, you know, some people are cer- certain situ- situations. If you're tempted by certain things, you should not be in that situation. Like so, the one bishop should have turned away. Yeah, and if they both were trying to overcome mm-hmm. pornography, maybe yeah. they both need to look away. Yeah, exactly. Despite, regardless yeah. of how, she but reacts you know, in that right moment, now. like, hey, 
God can yeah. use them. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, anyway, so that, that's that's that. Um, do you all find that kind of interesting? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. very interesting. Yeah, true. but uh, and it's you know from a practical standpoint, what do you do with this? I think that maybe we can just be more aware of times when we are being overly curious, maybe when we're not using our time wisely. Because mm-hmm. you think about it, most of us, myself included, don't pray enough, mm-hmm. and most yeah. of us are yeah. spending a yeah. lot of time. You know, we make the time for the things that we want. And we yeah. don't always desire prayer the way we should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely sure. true. So, all right. Well, um, we have uh, a little bit of time. I don't know if there's any comments, anybody out there. If you're watching this on a recorded basis, you can leave comments and perhaps we'll see them uh, in the future. I try to check them usually. So. Oh, oh, do you? Okay. I even, do. Even I respond to it. I respond to messages sometimes. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see. Uh, it's uh, Who is uh, Interregnum MCM? I could be completely wrong but i want to say that's uh damon oh damon okay. yeah okay i could be wrong but i try not to keep up with usernames but i don't always um and then adrian liked your your comment about picking locks to steal <laughs> steal <laughs> yep uh, that's what i think of when you talk about using my knowledge for bad things yeah right to do uh, bad doing, things doing, 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 i'm yeah. like pick a lock or figure out how to open the cookie jar without everyone knowing mm-hmm. that i yeah, would think like jar. if you do some like bizarre search uh, about something that you're just uh, I, I, I don't want to, well, I, I've done not searches like, like horrible things, but just had more curiosity, probably sinful curiosity. Oh, yeah. But then you think like, oh my gosh, you know, like now that's yeah. on my, now the yeah, government it's on knows. My permanent record that <laughs> the I'm, government yeah. knows. Like for instance, I think one time when I was younger, I, well, I had, this was a book. This was not going to be, you know, a digital print, but I uh, had a book that was like, I think it was a Nancy Drew how to be a detective book. It was some really goofy thing, but it was like, how do you open an envelope and reseal it without anyone knowing that kind of thing, you know? Mm, yeah. And I remember like, I want to try this. And I did it like with my parents' permission. They knew I was doing it. It wasn't like I was opening something I shouldn't, but I was like, wow, this is how you do it. That's so cool. I mean, yeah. I haven't used that information, but I do have that, you know, mm-hmm. you have that yeah. knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, I, I've got, uh, Easy but challenging uh, Aye, trivia for you chihuahua. today. It's nothing. It's nothing. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, the reason I pick trivia, you know, kind of like mindless trivia questions, is because uh, you know, I, I, it's, we have no minds. It's, it, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yeah, you know, a couple weeks ago it was too deep, and this one will be more <laughs> fun. It'll be kind of rapid fire. There's uh, you know these are ones you probably will get. You know, just see who gets it quicker. And also, I, you know, so that we don't look overly scrupulous, like people can never do trivia, because of course we do trivia oh, uh, during, you know, share I have the most random trivia in my brain. Okay, so are you all ready to do this? I Make am so? ready. All right, so, and I, I don't know why I always, I like a, a good match, you know, uh, and I try to find things that, you know, you all have a little difference in age and all that, but uh, that, you know, Hopefully, you guys would know. It's just a matter of who gets it quicker, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Is Did there I, a theme? Uh, um, no. Oh, okay. It's, it's okay. trivia. Okay. Oh, just <laughs> random. No, it's, it's random. It's not, yeah. you know. So we have a 50 50 chance of knowing it. Uh, and so <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll ask at the end of this in order to tie into the theme of the show are we better off having known these random, fascinating facts? Or it was it just a total waste of you know five ten minutes of uh, of our time? Okay, all right. <laughs> that would be the question. Let's okay, waste so time here, together. Let's here, go. here we go. Um, and okay, so Cecil and William. Okay, uh, what is celebrated on February second and is also the a presentation? Bass. The name of no. Okay, remember these are not necessarily religious. Uh, oh, uh, Groundhog Day. Uh, <laughs> I like how we both went it's, so Catholic. I, I know. It's good. So what do you think? You're like at a Catholic radio station yeah, or something? Uh, the um, only vowel on a standard keyboard that is not on the top line of letters. A. Okay. I have a keyboard in front of me, to be fair. <laughs> well, so did you. So did you. So, we both had the... True. Yeah. Um, how many stars are on the European Union flag? Oh, oh gosh. European Union. Uh, oh, gosh. I don't okay. know. It's 12. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I so, have no so, idea. Some of these may be kind of tough. Okay? I, no I couldn't Go- even picture what that looks uh, like. <laughs> globe Near. and Jerusalem are types of what? I'm sorry. Say again? Yeah. What was the Globe first? and Jerusalem are types of what? Again. Places. To- uh, that's... Yeah, that's no, it's artichokes. Oh, yeah, these uh, are more tough. Aren't okay, they? that's okay. <laughs> now, some, some, some are more tougher than others. Okay, okay, okay that's all right. Okay, that's okay. Uh, what's the most popular drink in the world that is not alcohol? Lemonade, uh, water, uh, mm. Coke. Like, I was gonna say Coke as well, but is it how many iced tea? No, tea, coffee. 
Coffee. Oh my uh, God. Why did go. it take us so long okay. to get to coffee? Oh, wow. <laughs> Come on, William. You got. Okay. What does HTTP stand for? Oh, uh, oh, for heaven's sake. I don't remember I'm what it stands for. This. You know, the hyper, hyper text the transfer protocol. Taco I, I thought, person. I, I okay. Thought, <laughs> it's not hit the taco person. Oh, so person. HTTP. You didn't know that. James, did I, you know that? I did that? know it, but I couldn't remember it. I thought it was hit the taco person. Okay. Hit the taco person. Huh. Hit the taco person. Okay. Did you just pick that up right now? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. I should give you another point for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, which planet is the hottest in the solar system? Jupiter. Whoa, you said that with a lot of confidence, but it's not true. <laughs> I think it's, isn't that was it, the first one that came to my mind. Isn't uh, it? It's Mars? No. It's Venus. not Venus. Venus. Oh, it's Venus. Uh, you would think it would be, Mar- uh, be Mercury because it's the closest. And I, you know, right? I, right, right. I knew it. Why didn't because... y'all guess the closest? It'd be wrong, but why didn't you I guess the closest? I think I accidentally mixed up Mar- um, Mars and Mercury in my head. Okay. I'm because not, I'm not giving you a point. I'm yeah, sorry. that's okay. I don't know. Okay. Get... How, many Lord, how many Lord of the Rings films are there? Three. Three. <laughs> I'm going to give it to William. Oh, come on. Okay. Um, which animal can be seen on the Porsche logo? Uh, the Porsche horse. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. Um, what does BMW stand for? Something. Uh, Should know this. Something. Something. I, oh, I I knew this one. I know this one. I just can't okay. think of it. This is Bavarian terrible. Bavarian Motor Works. Yep, my friend drives a BMW. Okay. I really should know this. Yeah, you should. Uh, which yeah. country invented tea? England. No, sure. India. Good nope. guess, but wrong. Uh, uh, Nepal. Okay, China. Chi- uh, oh, I was okay. about to say China. You Which said American just- state is the largest by area? California. Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> hey, we said it at the same Ooh, time. I'll bet I you know I'm always going to give one. Always going to give it to one. Come on. Okay, it's four to two. Okay, oh, we got wow. we got a little game going here. Right. Four to okay. two. Who, What's wait. the name of the world's longest river? Nile. Okay. Mm. Yes. Um, the Adventure of Sherlock Holmes was written by which writer? Con- Arthur Conan Con- Doyle. Doyle. Uh, Arthur Con- Conan Doyle. You know what <laughs> I was trying to say? I just said that? it too fast. No, no, okay. I didn't. Okay, all right. Uh, what is the slogan for the Apple Company? Uh, no. Uh, what is this? Apple. Okay, you're not going to get it. No. Th- think different. Think different. Uh, how many stripes does the Adidas logo have? Three. Yes. Does right it really? Yeah, oh, yes. I just that was a guess. Uh, according to Greek mythology, uh, who oh, was no. the first woman on Earth? The first woman Venus. on Earth, yeah, Aphrodite, Venus. I don't. I always get the gods confused. I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was gonna Pandora. Say oh, okay. oh Pandora. remember Pandora's box? box? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, fissures, vents, and plugs are all associated with which geological feature? Fiz- fissures, vents, and plugs. Say say the whole question again. Fissures, vents, and plugs are all associated with which geological feature? Electricity. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't know. <laughs> Volcanoes. Just, oh. <laughs> Electricity isn't a geological feature. <laughs> so okay, we got about six more. Okay, uh, and it's 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 seven tor- to two. The torment. So you're almost mathematically eliminated, but uh, not yeah. quite yet. You got to get them all. Oh wow. Um, it's okay. At least uh, you didn't answer electricity. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should take a point away from no, that. No, 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 no. Uh, how many eyes does a bee have? A, bee. a thousand, isn't it? Like a hundred, a lot. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, ten, two. Uh, I'll go with uh, ten thousand. <laughs> Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I was close as I said 10. No, no dice. Oh, come on. Uh, in the United Kingdom, what is the day after Christmas called? Boxing Day. Boxing Day. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is the tallest breed of dog in the world? Great Dane. Great Dane. Yes. Okay. Oh, she's, the guess, Boy, <laughs> she's a trivia master. See, I guess so. You know why? Because she's simply curious. <laughs> Okay, all, yes, all, 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 all we're proving me. here is that... Me, me winning is like... Uh, um, okay, three more. Um, uh, how many ribs are in a human body? Uh, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. I'm going to count. <laughs> Ten? Count. Eight. Ten? Okay, uh, Eight. 20, 24. Uh, uh, William's closer. Wait. Okay, and that, that was a, a five-point question. I am no, really okay. bad with biology, okay, apparently. Okay, 24. Uh, what is the hardest rock in the world? Granite. Oh. Um, obsidian. No, Diamond. Dime. Uh, oh, right. Duh. Come on okay. now. Okay. I don't know if Obsidian counts. Uh, last well. question. Okay. Yeah. It's worth 15. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Don't uh, you dare. Who invented scissors? Edward Scissorhand. <laughs> no. Um, someone who really needed to cut something. Who invented uh, it's Thomas a, it's, Edison? It's a person, uh, a real Renaissance man. Oh. Famous uh, uh, artist. Da Vinci? 
Yes. Oh wow. Yes. That makes okay. sense. He invented so, a lot of random stuff. I swear. All right. Well, we, we won't we won't say the final score, but we know that Cecil <laughs> is more curious and uh, William's more studious. Oh, wow. Okay. So Fair. how, how about that for the, winning uh, winning It's not the first time someone said that to me. Yeah, okay. So uh, <laughs> so there we that go. was literally my entire educational upbringing. <laughs> Cecil's too curious, but not. Uh, all right, so the question is, and we can all weigh in as we close out the program today, we, we can leave a little bit early today, is that are, you, are you better having known all that or was that a total waste of time? Was that curiosity or was that studiousness? The show. <laughs> Not the show. No, the trivia. For oh, the trivia. I, mean, come on. Uh, I, I would argue the show was studiousness. Yeah, okay? I'd agree. Okay. Um, I, I, I would say it depends. Some of the trivia, I think, could be handy and useful. Yeah. It's like life. how, like, and again, I'm just kind of playing devil. You know, the, like knowing that Leonardo da Vinci invented scissors from a practical standpoint, other than being on a trivia show which is very common or a right. trivia game well why do we need but to know that, why right? do we learn about leonardo da vinci at all then yeah why do we have to know that he painted why do we Mona have to Lisa? know anything why do we have to know thomas edison invented the light bulb exactly right? but i think that's these part are of, legitimate questions that's part of our have. education yeah. though that's like everyone learns yeah those but things. imagine if there was electricity and somebody some student said you know who invented that exactly and somebody's like you know don't ask that question okay right. that's just curiosity. we don't have curiosity here it, it doesn't matter right, right. whereas we, thomas Edison, okay like for example somebody could say they're they're, they're a really good artist and they can they find out that da vinci also invented scissors and they can say wow you know i don't have to be focused on one thing i can actually do do right. diverse things you mm-hmm. know um you know. yeah uh but i think that's the very definition of a renaissance person is that they are they, they're talented in a lot of different areas can confirm i'm a very curious person i get distracted all the time and i'm mm-hmm. like what about this now now do you think that it ever and you know not that you're in like confession but whatever like some be something that you like i think i need to go confess that now, ha- after... Oh, sure. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there have been times in my life, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can go I'll, down... You can I'll, get too far on I'll things. give you a classic example of, of curiosity in, in my life. I talked about Niagara Falls, okay? When I was in Niagara Falls, I found out that... Um, it's a lot of people have like committed suicide. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. On, on Niagara Falls, they think it's a, you know for whatever reason their twisted mind. They think it's a a, a good way to go out, right? Mm. So they 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 actually jump in and then they go <laughs> and they die. Well, I was curious about that, so I went online and you know people committing suicide in Niagara Falls, right? And like like a videos were popping up yeah. of actually people. Oh and, wow! And I'll never be able to get that out of my head. I mean, to this day, you know, I have that Im- that that image of of people's faces, you know, going down Niagara Falls. And that was like absolute curiosity. I never confessed it. You know, maybe I should, you know, because I, I think that, that was sinful. I mean, I don't, I don't need to see that, right? Right, right. That's like absolutely gratuitous, non, the waste of my time. Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't, it didn't make me a better person, you know. But then if somebody was tasked up in New York of saying, uh, we need you to research, you know, why people are committing suicide in Niagara Falls, well, then that person's job becomes mm-hmm. to research it. They, right. go, they go online. To look up data. And yeah, stuff they look like up that. data. Yeah. They Absolutely. look at how people are doing it, what right. people are doing it. And so all of a sudden <clears> it <throat> becomes their job. Yeah. And or they, if you're a historian uh, and you're like yeah. having to, you know, mm-hmm. keep records right. of what has happened. I remember um, when I was um, in, in college, there was this movie called Faces of Death. And oh. it, it's like, oh, it's just like video of people dying, being mm-hmm. shot. And and, and, mm-hmm. and I remember like being with like in my dorm and you know, like watching this with but it's a total curiosity. Total, and it's just it's just bad, you mm-hmm. know. You just don't need to see that. Right. So, anyways, I think it's a common problem that yeah. a, lot, a lot of people have, myself Today, included. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, especially so. with the internet, I feel like without right. the internet, we'd be significantly less curious. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So because you'd actually, you know, you'd have to go to the library and pull out books. Yeah. And actually, actually spend, you have to work harder to work be curious. really hard. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And the information, pe- the people have to work even harder to get the information out there. Mm-hmm. So. So should a priest? Uh, in his Sunday humbly, maybe talk about curiosity sometime. Yeah, I think I a lot think, of people feel, at some point, feel, yeah. feel very convicted. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, I know when, uh, like Adrian, this morning, I, I used the example of Trivial Pursuit, which was a very popular game back in the '80s. And <laughs> after my segment, Adrian was going straight into Fear and Trembling, which is a game about trivia. You know, so I think he, he was like, "Oh," he said, "Were you? Are you implying that the, trivia the, is bad?" Yeah, the trivia is bad, and so <laughs> that, anyways, that was kind of awkward, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't think there's anything wrong with their game. I think it's kind of fun, and you learn something, and you know, that kind of thing. All right. Well, I thought that was kind of fun, and uh, we appreciate y'all watching, and uh, whether live or after the fact, 
Um, and thank you, f- my two uh, studio cohorts, and uh, James as well for being part of the program. Uh, I guess that's going to wrap it up. We are. Oh, and uh, next month, um, I'm not going to be here on a particular weekend, and I've been asked whether we're going to run a beat repeat or whether the other hosts want to do Back to the Father. What, what, the what? weekend. I think it's like May 20. I'm May? Sorry, not, not May. May. <laughs> not, it's, uh, September, like, oh, it's actually this Yeah, month. I was going to say yeah, this yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the 23rd first. or so, but anyway. 22nd. We, the we 22nd. got some time to, but prayerfully consider whether uh, y'all want to do a show. I think William and I could in, totally in, do a takeover. My yeah. house. <laughs> we know yeah. what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I can even give you suggestions for topics. And okay. That. Okay, so we got to have not so many breaks in the program. I know, because we have share in two weeks, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. All right, thanks, everybody, for watching. God bless you, and have a great uh, Labor Day weekend. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for Back to the Father. And don't forget, the glory of God is the human person fully alive. If you have comments about the show, email Dave Palmer at grnonline.com.